The MCU has given us some of the best moments in movie history, but what about all those amazing moments we didn't see? Sure, we all remember things like Tony snapping his fingers, the Avengers trying to lift Thor's hammer, Captain America's elevator fight, etc. But there are still so many great moments that seem to happen off screen that we needed to see. How did Hulk and Bruce become Professor Hulk? How did Black Widow meet Hawkeye? What happened when the heroes were undusted? All that and more crucial scenes coming your way right now. Bruce Banner has had one of the most fascinating trajectories in the MCU. His character arc has been so drastic, he looks like an entirely different person than the one we first met. But seriously, up until Infinity War, it seems like the strongest Avenger was on some sort of journey. We saw Bruce go from hating the other guy and desperately trying to keep the Hulk buried, all the way to Infinity War, where Bruce tried to get Hulk to come out, but he wouldn't. That's a huge change. And in Endgame, we get the surprise resolution, Professor Hulk where Bruce tells us he spent months combining the two personas together, so it was Hulk's body and Bruce's mind, combining the brawn and the brain. And I get that Endgame had a lot going on, but come on, we totally needed to see that. Mainly because there are so many questions still. It was established that Hulk was his own personality and character, so what happened to him? Is he gone forever? That's the sort of emotional, cathartic goodbye fans of the character needed to see. The fact that Infinity War ended with Banner saying that the two needed to work things out seemed to set up a resolution, but then we never got to see it. It felt really unfair for the long journey the character has been on this entire time. I think it's fair to say all the Avengers assembling at the end of Endgame stands as one of cinema's best moments ever. It was so awe-inspiring seeing all of our heroes reappear to help the remaining Avengers battle Thanos' forces. And the setup is practically perfect. There, Captain America is, pretty much acknowledging the helplessness of the situation, but determined to keep fighting. He straps on his shield and is about to charge when we hear Falcon utter those famous on your left words, and then boom, everyone shows up in a massive coordinated attack. And yeah, it's a great moment, but don't you want to see how it all came together and got organized? The only clips we saw of the dusted coming back was in Spider-Man Far From Home, where band players suddenly appear in the gym, and that's played off as more of a joke. It would have been a great moment for Doctor Strange, as since this was part of his plan, we could have seen him reappear and then immediately get to work uniting all the heroes to meet everyone on the battlefield. And I say this from a business perspective as well. Doctor Strange is going to be incredibly important to the future of the MCU, so having a moment in Endgame that highlights how cool he can be and the leadership qualities he possesses would have been a smart move. Although the Thor Ragnarok trailer gave it away, it's still such a great moment when a trapped Thor must fight Sakaar's gladiator champion, only to find that it's the Hulk. Sorry, I mean Thor's friend from work. But not a lot of time was spent seeing how Hulk got to Sakaar, and then how he became the gladiator champion in the first place. Last we saw Hulk, he was feeling guilty and shameful about causing so much damage in Age of Ultron, that he stole a Quinjet and left to be on his own. A brief video clip in Ragnarok sees that ship getting sucked into a wormhole and transporting Hulk to Sakaar. We know that Hulk isn't the sharpest tool in the shed at times, so what was his journey like from landing on Sakaar to becoming a beloved gladiator and champion with his own room and hot tub? How did the Hulk manage to get himself into that situation? Was he captured upon arriving at Sakaar and placed in the gladiator pitch just like Thor, only to presumably beat the old champion? And how great of a character moment would that be? Hulk at that point would hate himself for being a monster, but then in the gladiator pits, there are crowds of adoring fans who cheer every time he smashes something. That would make the big green guy feel accepted for the first time ever. So how come we couldn't see that? Thanos was one of the best villains in the entire MCU, not only because he was a terrifying force of power and strength, but also because you could understand where he was coming from. Sure, none of us agree with Thanos' extreme measures, but the reasoning behind what he was doing was way more complex than just your average destroy and conquer everything villain. In a very brief scene between Thanos and Doctor Strange, Thanos talks about how Titan was destroyed, that it once was a utopia, but resources quickly grew scarce and the planet eventually destroyed itself. Thanos tried to warn everyone, but it didn't work and nobody listened, which led to Thanos making it his mission to save the universe by wiping out half of everything. And I get that Infinity War was already a long movie, but this sort of setup would have been way better to see rather than just have Thanos tell us it. 
It would have made the character even more relatable in a sense, which is the kind of great storytelling we want from an Avengers movie. Thanos was such a fascinating character, and seeing him as a younger alien trying hard to save his own planet and failing would have been awesome to see. Maybe this scene could have gone in Endgame somewhere, which would have been great because I think it's fair to say Thanos lost some of his nuance and relatability in that film, right? One of the best relationships in the MCU is Black Widow and Hawkeye. These two have a history of saving each other in times of great need. We've seen in the MCU Black Widow save Hawkeye from being brainwashed, as well as Black Widow save Hawkeye from being Ronin, and then of course Black Widow saves Hawkeye by sacrificing herself on Vormir. Wow, when I say it out loud, that seems pretty one-sided, right? Well, that's only because we haven't seen on-screen Hawkeye rescuing Black Widow. We know that from the Avengers that Black Widow was an assassin, and S.H.I.E.L.D. sent Hawkeye to eliminate her. But instead of doing that, Hawkeye spared her and was able to convince her to become a good guy. That's the fundamental element of their relationship, and yet we've never seen it on screen. So, Thanos is on his big quest to get the Infinity Stones, right? And he sends Loki to Earth with the staff in order to conquer it. And it's only later that we find out that the staff houses the Mind Stone. One thing that's never been addressed is how Thanos got the Mind Stone in the first place, or why he was so willing to let Loki borrow it. It was the first stone that Thanos collected, and it would have been great to see him acquire it given how obsessive he'd become later in the series. That moment would have worked in both fleshing out the Mad Titan even more by filling in his backstory, as well as answering one of the MCU's biggest plot holes with why he let Loki borrow the scepter in the first place. Iron Man 3 is an incredibly divisive film thanks to its Mandarin twist, but it's also a weird entry in the MCU. The trilogy ender seemed like it was trying to wrap up Iron Man's story arc that started in the first film, and on that level, it succeeded. Iron Man 3 ended with Tony blowing up all of his suits, having the surgery to remove the shrapnel, and not relying on the Iron Man persona to save the day because he didn't need that anymore. Which is fine and all, but that was a weird storyline when we all knew Iron Man would be back in more Avengers movies. So Avengers Age of Ultron opens up with the whole resolution of Iron Man 3 completely erased, and Tony back to being Iron Man with without an explanation. He later explains in Civil War how he gave it up for a short time, but then couldn't live without that thrill and went back to being Iron Man, which ended up driving Pepper away. That's the kind of emotional decision we need to see on screen. Infinity War sees the Avengers all scrambling like chickens with their heads cut off as they try to combat Thanos and his forces from collecting the Infinity Stones. And as we see the characters learn exactly what Infinity Stones are, we learn that one character has been hiding a big secret. Turns out, Gamora has always known where the Soul Stone was located, but kept its location hidden from her adoptive father. It's only after Thanos threatens to torture Nebula that Gamora caves and gives up the location. But something we never saw was how Gamora found the Soul Stone's location in the first place. This would have been awesome to see because it would have been a quick glimpse of Gamora's past as she struggles with being a potential double agent. Where was that scene? Avengers Endgame opens with Hawkeye enjoying a nice family picnic with his wife and kids only for things to turn dark really fast. What started as a relaxing day with the people he loved suddenly turned into Hawkeye eating picnic food alone next to four piles of dust. Later we learn that Clint understandably took this loss hard and became a ruthless vigilante named Ronin. We see Ronin in action for a bit, but it would have been nice to see how Hawkeye got to this point. And maybe that's something the upcoming Hawkeye TV show can elaborate on with flashbacks to Clint losing all control and becoming a heartless assassin. More scenes with Ronin would have been better because as it stands now, the first scene we see Ronan in, he's brought back to the good side by Black Widow. And without much background context, this feels a little underdeveloped. Infinity War opens with Thor's ship practically destroyed and Thanos victorious. But things almost started out differently. Originally, the movie started with Thanos completely decimating Xandar and getting the Power Stone from them. It was a way to show how powerful Thanos was. But the scene was ultimately cut because it just didn't flow right. But we saw how strong Xandar was in Guardians of the Galaxy, so a full-on fight between Xandar and Thanos' forces would have been so epic to see. It would establish just how much of a threat Thanos was, and set the stage for what was in store for our Avengers. Plus, just for fun, maybe an attack on Xandar that left it in shambles would have teased the appearance of Nova in some way. You never know, right? What off-screen moment do you want to see the most? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to tell us other important unseen moments in the MCU that you wanted to see play out.
And while you're there, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more awesome MCU content like this. Thanks for watching CBR. See you next time.